cancel. Uh, I heard about uh, something you did once for you for something. It's another program. Yeah. And uh, I went there in a suit because I thought, no, these guys will be like the lit people and so on. And uh, when I got in there, I said, uh, I'm here for my uh, group of young people who are threatened by the ending of this. They want to keep doing what they're doing. And can I speak to the, whoever is the main attraction here? They were the end result of a thing called uh, a letter from Turner. It was a memo from Turner. It was the original thing. Anyway, Larry! Okay, so just a minute, Tom. You can, hang, <laughs> uh, you can hang up the phone. We have solved our technological problems and we can hear Hello? you on, on yeah, the TV. Yes. Can you hear yes. us? Can you hear us? I'm not sure. He's... Can you hear us? He's turned yeah. his speak. He turned no. his speaker off on our instruction. Oh, yes. Oh. Speaker up. Tom? Tom? <laughs> speaker up. <laughs> Tom, the speaker up. I think his son gets it. That looks like a son turning. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Hello? Hello? Can you there hear us? Yay! Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Okay. We can hear so you we now. Don't need your, we don't need, we don't need the, the phone, phone, Tom. We don't need the phone. No? Phone no. great. <laughs> Here, we'll keep this up in the corner. So now let we can just talk to you like we'll let what, the people in. And you're, and you're uh, big. Yeah. Anyway, so, Larry um, had me in, and what he was doing was he had a big tin full of marijuana. <laughs> he said, uh, do you smoke? I said, no, I don't smoke. I'm a chartered accountant. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you trying to do? Get some kind of a, an evening job where you won't do anything, really? No, I'd say I, I have this group that I work with, and uh, they want to keep going, and uh, so on, so on, so on. Mm, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh -huh. Just, just a second. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I got it. Mmm. First rate. Good stuff. Uh -huh. Said I to myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> Next thing I know, we get a check for ten grand <laughs> from Larry. <laughs> I didn't have to buy any marijuana from him because I didn't use it. <laughs> else. Anyway, that's what it was like. Very, very odd. But uh, 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 it, it was a response to actual problem. And now when I see, you know. What is happening to the young people in in uh, Spain and places like that? This could happen here, you know. This could happen here, and young people will be again out to the pasture. I I, I believe uh, Stephen Orloff has a question for you, Tom. Tom, it's not a question, but oh, I, I just want to inform everybody here that it. I, the last two years, I've had the honor of, of working with Tom on the board of Playwrights Canada Press. And at our last AGM uh, a few weeks ago, we voted to establish the position of Director Emeritus. And Tom was honored as the first Director Emeritus of the press. But Tom, one thing that you didn't know was that aside from our desire to honor you, the real reason we did it was to keep you on the board forever. <laughs> <laughs> and I want you to know your feelings about me have spread because I was uh, uh, told the other day that I will receive the uh, Her Majesty's Diamond something <laughs> Middle. <laughs> and if I can't come and get it, they'll send it to me. <laughs> well, congratulations. But, you know, I, I, I have kind of changed a little bit in my uh, dotage. I, I still think 
Canada would be better off without a royalty, to tell you the truth. We, we have to grow up at some point and uh, not keep, you know, bowing and scraping. Anyway, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the, uh, you know, phases that playwriting and play publishing and whatnot went through uh, back there in the 70s, after, after the St. Adele uh, thing, and the, the one, and at, there was the original phase here in Canada before that happened, where the uh, the National Theatre of Canada was the CBC, uh, professionally was the CBC, I mean, when I, uh, you know, got a show on, uh, uh, well, it was six, 90 minute play on CBC, uh, it was wonderful, you know. That was it. I was on there with Len Peterson and, and uh, Bernard Slade and all these people who lived in Toronto. And I was in, you know, somewhere else, like Winnipeg. Yeah, but uh, Mr. Diefenbaker did me a big favor because uh, in Parliament, he denounced my play by name. <laughs> that I was a disloyal Canadian and that, that what was the, uh, was the CBC in the business of trying to, to you know, make, make Canada somehow leave the British Empire, etc. Yes, sir, that's right. Anyway, uh, they, uh, and he said, he's asking the uh, the Secretary of State, who at that point was, in, uh, you know, to blame for the CBC, and uh, he uh, said, I want to find out, does the government share this desire to, to uh, leave the British Empire? And CBC had never had anything from, from Parliament, ever, and they were so taken aback that they put the show on again. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a weird arrangement with uh, the guy who ran the uh, drama in CBC that I would get, uh, what was it, now? I got $1,500 for, I imagine, for a 90-minute play. And, uh, but if it was done again, I, it would at, go up to 2000 4000 for two of them. So I phoned up uh, the uh, head of the uh, drama and I said, uh, uh, when can I <laughs> expect my, my $2,500? <laughs> I knew I'd hear from you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you know, well, and then eventually it was done on radio and so on and so on. And of course, at that point then, all kinds of uh the theaters here and there, Pier One in in, in Halifax. Uh, I, I never got got it done in, in Winnipeg, but uh, a lot of other places, Calgary, and they did a wonderful uh, tour of the whole province with the show, and uh, it shows. You know, it, that is was what kind of made, and that was mid '60s. Uh, that was what made me realize. In a way, that guy at Lip was right. Until there's a commodity, uh, you don't really exist. And that was when, uh, when, when the time when we were meeting Gaspe and, and, uh, and then again met Ben Shaw, I wanted to find a way uh, to make our, our art, not only art, but also something for sale something you could touch, you know? And uh, we were very lucky with the guy who came. His first, uh, at that point, uh, the only place I could find in print, Canadian, uh, English speaking, uh, was, uh, there were about seven or eight that Peter High had by then published uh, Talon books. 
and uh, nothing else anywhere except for three or four playing plays like uh, Rita Joe and uh, three others, I forget, in English, uh, that we published at uh, when I was running the Canadian Theatre Centre during the uh, run up, you know, to the uh, to uh, Expo and whatnot. Uh, but uh, so we, it was really a, a wonderful meeting of great desire and hunger, in my case, with potential to do. And it was, I'm grateful to this day that, that, that those lip people did do as much as they could. And then from then on, the ones that survived were the ones who so were able to survive, you know what I mean? It's a tough world to be in the theater, and it's a tough world writing plays. But at least now, there's somebody there who wants to see your play, and if it looks like a, you know, worth the bother, get it published and shoot it around the world. I think they want to ask a question. Do you have a question? Can you tell folks about, a little bit about the, the great schism of the late 70s, the, uh, the, the Playwrights Guild of Canada and, and uh, Playwrights Canada split and uh, reunification? Uh, to begin with, uh, uh, we, we wanted to have two organizations, to tell you the truth. When I talked to Carol and when, that, when we were trying to figure out you know, what these things would be like, and uh, because we felt this way, a publisher has to be like a real estate person. You know, he has to be, and she has to be everybody's friend. And uh, somebody running a guild has to be made of sterner stuff, I think, because uh, when you're, you know, dealing with uh, all the, you know, things with, uh, with theaters and whatnot, you have to be nice and, and uh, so forth, but you also have to be pretty stern about what you want from your folks. And uh, it's a different kind of a, of a uh, person uh, to recovery when uh, something... I, I, uh, uh, it was a different kind of thing. I ran the uh, Canadian Theatre Centre for four or five years uh, during the 60s, and uh, I had to be pretty tough with people, you know, because uh, we had, I had sold them on the idea of the Canadian Theatre Centre on the basis of certain things, and one was that the, the uh, Theaters would get up off their collective asses and sell a lot more season tickets. And uh, so I had to be, you know, I drove with people and say, you know, uh, are you going to do a, a decent uh, program this year and, and campaign and so on? Because if you don't, uh, don't expect uh, an awful lot of uh, sympathy from the Canada Council. You, you have to be mean with people get them to change their habits. And they did. The Vancouver Symphony, by the way, no one in Vancouver will buy season tickets to anything. I said, oh, you get, you get money from Canada County? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I'll say goodbye. They did such a good campaign, they had the biggest uh, role of, of uh, season tickets of any orchestra in the world. <laughs> Nobody in Vancouver buys season tickets. <laughs> so you felt that there should be, that there needed to be two different kinds of people heading to these two organizations. I think, I think you need to. Right. Uh, one of your, but it exploded but, though, right? I mean, the whole thing was just a mess. And you, you, I mean, you were kind of central putting the two back together again as well, right? Sorry? The, 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 what happened was that Clarence Canada, which was the press, 
And then the, the guild, which was going to negotiate the contract, started fighting with each other. And, uh, and you were very active in, in reuniting those two things to become Clarachin of Canada. Well, at, at the time, you see, uh, we didn't have the money for two. And uh, uh, if we, well, no, we didn't. We didn't have to, uh, two uh, separate organizations. And then they came together, and I, at that point, I resigned because you can't be two people, and you can't be two uh, organizations. And uh, we were very lucky to get uh, Romero, uh, Angela, because she, what, what she did was devote 98% of her time uh, to the... Uh, uh, publishing and 2% to the guild side of things. So we had to split it up again so that the, the guild would be in a position to, to do the kind of job that uh, they wanted to do and we wanted them to do. But it takes money. And it takes interest and energy. When you got it, that's what you're going to do. Um, yeah. And she was not that sort of person, you know. We have a question from uh, David Belke. Hi, Tom. Yeah, you talked. Hi. About, hi. Uh, you talked about the initial spark that brought together all the people to create the playwrights co-op and publish the plays. I was just wondering what was the reaction from the rest of the theater community in Canada? Was there a positive response? Was there any response at all? Uh, I don't remember an avalanche of response. <laughs> Well, I think they said to themselves, oh, shit, there's another problem. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff is available now. <laughs> For a lot of people, you know, I, and I was one of them, in a way, at, at Winnipeg, but we did do, you know, we commissioned plays from Bernard Slade, Len Peterson, uh, we did a play of Hirsch's, we did a play of mine, I was manager there, uh, Trap, and, uh, but uh, our, we were not there to, uh, be, you know, of Playwrights uh, Assistance Corporation, or anything like that. Uh, and what we were doing was what was already part of the, uh, the, uh, in English Canada, the National Theatre anyway. And Peterson, CBC all the way, Ernest Slade all the way, until somebody said, why don't you go to, to uh, if you want to make a lot of money, why don't you go down to Hollywood, which he did, and he made a hell of a lot of money <laughs> there and on Broadway. But... Uh, I think for most of them, uh, they want to know what was big stuff two, three years ago in London and New York. I know when uh, I, I wrote, a, we called it a, an opera, uh, Satyricon at, uh, at uh, Stratford. And we had a month in, in, in the uh, Avon, sold out every night, and no, nobody, Hirsch was forced to, uh, to uh, resign over it. It was such a terrible thing. And Mrs. Uh, uh, one of the founders of Canadian, uh, Mrs. Maver Moore, says to me, this is not Stratford Tom, this is only entertainment. <laughs> Isn't that what Shakespeare was doing with all the murders and everything? <laughs> yeah. But it, uh, that was that. I mean, we were personally, I'm a non let me tell you. Because why? Because we wanted to do something that was a pale shadow of what was being happened somewhere else, but was a what was irritating for people there was I based all the characters 
not on satirical only because it, there's not a single joke in that quote unquote book. You know, so writing a, a, a sort of comedy opera, and uh, it, I don't know, it, it, I, I based it on, you know, people in Stratford, and people noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Price Not at all. <laughs> so the plays were available, but getting them into the theaters was still a problem. Mm. The only way you, you ever got in uh, to uh, uh, theater was if you knew a, a director. Well, you know, and, and as a result, uh, in Winnipeg, we were doing plays of uh, James Rainey. On a, what a pro professional basis uh, before anybody else was doing it in the larger theaters. I, I meant to st start this talk by what happened in 1967. We had a huge colloquium uh, on theater design in, in uh, uh, the Expo. And uh, we did everything except theater design. <laughs> we had you know, Grotowski and oh, Marzak and people from all over the world, tons and tons of, of uh, people from Africa and so on. And, and there we had Sean Kenny, a remarkable man. He said it was one of the very best designers in the world. And... Uh, he, the one thing he could not do is put pen to paper, and he had to give a speech. So I had to go with him from pub to pub to pub <laughs> with him and his girlfriend, Miss Britton. I never did get her name. She was Miss Britton. I always called her Miss Britton. That was her name. Her. And uh, uh, the one thing that he said that I underlined when I was doing writing it all out for him was this small theaters create large theaters recreate and in the audience at, at that colloquium were all kinds of people like john palmer martin kinch and all kinds of people you know where i saw them before they were all air cadets <laughs> in the tv version of the uh, uh, 15 miles of broken glass. I, I thought, oh boy, the kids are back. <laughs> and, uh, but they were listening to what was being said by Dan and Kotowski and people like that that uh, had decided they wanted creativity and that meant a small theater. And I, it, it's nice to feel that the people are graduating from, you know, like past Ryan, places like that, uh, Toronto Free when it was there. Uh, but now <clears throat> things are, are bigger, costlier, and uh, unfortunately uh, we have a, a Yahoo government. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Jane Wiley has a question for you, Tom. I yeah. I feel as if we're going to Rashomon because I was with you part of the time, but doing other things. <clears throat> you remember somebody said to you, you quoted to me, that somebody said to you early on, isn't it lucky, Tom, that you weren't crippled by early success? <laughs> <laughs> you remember That's telling right. me that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue with anything you say. I'm so glad you're here and you're a guru in your own time. God bless you. <laughs> no question. No. <laughs> Somebody says to me uh, one day, uh, do you know Eddie Gilbert? He said, yeah, Eddie Gilbert. He took over from John Hirsch at the Mental Theater Center, which I had a hand in starting up. Oh, yeah. 
And also, uh, he, he has a wonderful uh, wife, Deborah Kipp, and my then girlfriend and I uh, were her babysitter for two years. <laughs> it's a small world. <laughs> Didn't help me. <laughs> no, no, uh, he got me to write three or four uh, short TV uh, films for him to film for CBC. Eddie. Uh, and he was, uh, at one time, before he met up with Debbie, uh, he had a, a, a long-time relationship with a, an actress from New York uh, who was from Canada and had studied at the National Theatre School when he was teaching there. And uh, he turned up at the Shaw Festival uh, because he was going to be directing a Captain Brass Pound or something. And uh, my wife said to, uh, or she worked there, she said, Jesse, Eddie, uh, no, she didn't. She said to this girl, we we'll call her Anne, guess who's going to be in, in the green room at 2 p.m.? Anne. Really? Oh, nice. I, I, I surprise her? Yes. I won't tell anybody that you're here. Two o'clock, he came in. She headed toward him. Eddie, he said, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's me, shithead. Oh, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I believe John Lazarus, John Lazarus has a question for you, Tom. It, it's not a question. I wish you were here personally so I could just tell you this in private instead of making an announcement of it. I was a spear carrier at Stratford the year you did Satyricon, and my favorite thing to do would be to sneak into the Avon and watch rehearsals. Satyricon was a parody of a burlesque show. And I loved your comment, that, that lady who said, this is mere entertainment. Because I want to tell you that show changed my life. It changed my view of what could be done where. The fact that Stratford was doing that outrageous, funny, dirty, talented show uh, was a revelation to me. So I just wanted to thank you for that. Well, I want, I'll show you the uh, bite marks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Hirsch re uh, resigned on opening night of Satyricon because he had been just treated abominably by everybody in in in, uh, in glaringly gold and the uh, gold and, uh, and he, he, he went, you know talk about freedom right? uh, and uh, within six months of it closing. I closed, and <laughs> all of a sudden, somebody came in and said, uh, hey, uh, guess what? I said, oh, you've made a study, and my job is, uh, we don't really need this job anymore, do we? That's right. <laughs> How did you guess that? <laughs> is it with me talking to you? That's what I would have done, uh, too, except... I wouldn't have let people know we've already, already hired my successor. Who's <laughs> 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 thrilled at the thought of being the next human sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Which Stratford has a, has, a, has a reputation of doing, does it not? Tara Goldstein has a question for you, Tom. Hi, Tom. It's very Shakespearean at the top. Anyway, sorry? Hi, Tom. My name is Tara, and there are a few of us who have small independent theater companies here, and given this present moment, what advice do you have for us? You started uh, with nothing, and look at what you built, and I think a lot of us feel we don't have very many resources these days. What would you say to those of us who have small independent theater companies and are trying to, to build? Well, I would be careful and make a list of people, you know, who uh, come to see your shows, get their names and addresses and whatnot, and ask for, for if they like your show and the work you're doing, 
uh, would they be supporters? They don't have to be board members, and they don't have to be actors or anything like that. But uh, uh, you know, there's nothing better than a, uh, a, an audience who really feel their time has come uh, talking to their member of parliament and things like that. Because uh, I don't know if you remember when they cut the uh, Canada Council, the present government, way back, and they lost a jillion seats in Quebec. Why? Because all the artists went to their people and said, don't vote for these jillions. And it worked. <laughs> Things got a little better for the Canada Council, but they're still not... I mean, when we were first going to them, you know, for many way back when, uh, they, were, they had maybe, I don't know, they had lots of people going to, you know, meetings here and there in the world, uh, but maybe at the most 50 organizations. Now they have like three, four, or 5,000 organizations. And the thing is, they have them because what those organizations are doing are what people want. And what, you, what we did always was try and get in touch with our audience and ask them uh, to give us a hand. When we were free, when we were charging you know, 10 bucks if you can afford it and that sort of thing. But eventually, of course, we got pushed into it where we had to had to have the ticket price. But if your problem is not getting enough from the province, not getting enough, you have to get yourselves and your audience to get in touch with the guys that can make their living, deciding how much they uh, Ontario Arts Council gets, how much can the council gets, and things like that. And if they have an idea, because they, you know what they all think? They, a lot of people who are really Yahoo's, they look in the mirror and say, oh, the candidate's like you, baby. Well, it isn't. It isn't at all. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. When we were talking a couple of days ago, Tom, I, be I believe you said you you had some advice for you wanted to give some advice to people who were st who were starting out. Do you, do you remember when we talked about that? Yeah. Do you remember what you said? Uh, I think no. Said, no. <laughs> do you remember what I said? Well, I, think, I think you said something like "just do it." Um, and, I, and that really resonated with me, particularly um, in regard to your stories about how you got started um, and how you just had the guts to go out there and off the top of your head invent the name of an organization, ask for money, um, and make it happen um, without, without having a full plan, you know, a fully worked out plan behind you. You just did it. And then, yeah. um, and then developed up, developed it on from there. <clears throat> I mean, do you well, think that still works? That still would work? I, you know, it's uh, at some point you got to find the starter yeah. if you want to get the car to go. You got to <laughs> put your foot on that starter. It's all there is too. And if it's just turning a key, you got to turn that key. But somehow or other, that car can't tell you to start moving. You got to tell it. And all these things that you that you want, those are vehicles uh, for your creation to have a nice ride. Horrible ride, whatever, better ride. Um, are, there any, uh, are there any other questions for Tom? Do you have anything else that you wanted to say to us today, Tom? Just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I was thinking like in, in, in the phases of our development as a group in society, playwrights, for CBC, Radio Canada, that was, that was our, our national theater for a long, long time. And my favorite uh, thing in that was the happy game. I ran home from play from school every night to hear Bert Grove in his game. Anyway, that when there was a pre-organization uh, phase, uh, oh, and the DDF, by the way, was then the, the National Theater for Amateur Productions. Oh, and by the way, uh, Martin Kinch. Uh, talked me into writing, a, a, you know, the director of, in uh, Vancouver now, and he talked me into uh, writing a, a stage version of that show for him to direct, and he said, you know, uh, it, there's a, this uh, contest every year, and for the best Canadian play in it, uh, there's a thousand dollars. And uh, you, you're a cinch to win it. It's such a good play. Uh, I said, okay. So I wrote it for him, and he put it on. And he did a pretty good job too. As amateur, but very like like less amateur. And uh, they uh, when uh, it, 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 I got this phone call in Stratford, very meaningful. So, can you be in Toronto on Saturday evening at, I've won, I've won. They have the thousand dollars for me. I certainly can, I said, I will be there. It was at the Y, you know, down on College Street. And uh, I went there and they were giving out all these awards and like the best coffee table, Hundred dollars for the best teacup, fifty dollars check. They have money. They're giving money to these people. Best actor, check. Best actress, check. So on, so on, so on. Finally, it's a, and now for the best play, fifteen miles of broken glass. Are you here? Tom Henry? Yes, I am. Gene, <laughs> jump onto the stage despite my polio, etc. <laughs> and uh, oh, every, the judges all loved your play. It's wonderful. <laughs> Here you are. And they give me this little square box. <laughs> Funny thing to put a check in. <laughs> I open it up and there's a big medal. And I, oh, it's underneath the medal. <laughs> I look at the guy and says, Well, that's it for tonight, folks. See you next year. Uh, at the end, I go to the guy in, in charge and I say, uh, I thought there was uh, you know, some little cash. Uh, in, uh, Thing for the best play. Well, yes, we've had it uh, every year except this year because our budget was so strained to be able to do give all the other uh, uh, awards in cash. We had to decide not to give the the play writer. Uh, I should have known. <laughs> but anyway. It went on to find a life of its own, you know, thanks to Douglas Risk and people like that out in Cal Calgary in those days and, and here and there. But anyway, that was a, there was a pre-organizational uh, phase uh, when really we were doing sort of a... a at St. Adele and at Shaw Festival... We were kind of, uh, what is it when the doctor 
put perhaps brown inside you to find out what's the matter. Diagnostic. It was a diagnostic period where we, where we were saying what was wrong and what we needed, you know, to do something about it. So both at St. of Alan Shaw. They pretty well gave us our, our walking papers, you know, to do this and you know, do something good for playwrights. And uh, I think we did do that. Yeah, I, I made a list of six or seven plays, uh, theaters that I knew of that are going with Nick. Uh, so, and at uh, St. Adele was uh, George Riga and Peterson, um, John Wiru, um, uh, <laughs> Oh, there was a guy from uh, the States uh, who knew a lot about uh, uh, playwrights' colonies, and he took me down to one on the north of um, the, uh, the uh, east coast. And there I met, you know, New York. Uh, Critics who are serving, you know, to help people on their their work and whatnot. So I, I made up my mind on uh, on that. What had happened, you see, at Banff was that uh, George Riga had been fired because he uh, accused the uh, the uh, management there of. Uh, being against uh, native town coming to to study at, at Banff. And I think um, George Rio was not in my Anyway, so they phoned me and they wanted me to take over. I said, I am not coming in as a replacement for George Riga because I was feel exactly the way he did. But if you want me, you'll have to wait. To 1973, and you'd have to get together the money to have a playwright's colony here at Bend. What's that? I said. I told him. But okay, well, give us a memo. That's that's how we got going at, at Bend. I was just lucky that this guy had taken me down there to see a colony in action. And a lot of people have written a lot of good stuff. Yeah, that's a result. Okay, I think I'm out of steam again, and you probably not. Oh, it's only, what is it? Well, what time is it there? Uh, 11.30? It's 11.30. It's coming up for 11.30, but we're, we're, we're happy if you're happy, Tom. Uh, yeah. Does anybody have any final questions that they'd like to ask Tom or any uh, statements? Other statements that I'd like to make? It doesn't have to be a question. Or have we got... Uh, have we got You're a hell of a guy, Tom. <laughs> 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 Got up and did something else. Uh, I think that's a wonderful message to uh, to leave with us to, today. And um, we really do thank you profoundly for everything that you've done for Canadian theatre, for playwrights in Canadian theatre over your long, long career. So I just really wanted, appreciate it. I want to congratulate the Guild for having such a super person in the. Uh, uh, presidential seat for short period of time, but she sure made a great, great uh, impression to anybody who met Shirley Perry. And, uh, <laughs> there it is. Well, thank you. 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 Thank you
Well, that's very kind of you, Tom. <laughs> but I haven't, I can't measure up to you. <laughs> but I can always try. <laughs> anyway, thank you so very much for giving us your time this, this, this morning and, and bearing with us through all of the technological difficulties that we were having at the beginning. But we sorted it out and it worked, uh, it worked well. And we, we really do appreciate it. And thank you, son, as well. Remarkable seeing you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. So, bye, bye, bye. Okay. I'll let my I'll let my techno technology expert here.